So today we're going to cover the, in terms of the standards called the IEC 60947-6-1. Um, today training will focus a lot in terms of deployments for this equipment called transfer switching, the equipment TSC, and will be based on these standards called the IEC 60947-6-1. I'm the senior design firm manager for those who are new and have not met me before. I'm the senior design firm manager and also the ambassador for Schneider Electric. And on a regular basis, uh, we do trainings like this. Then the, um, today's content, the, hopefully we can finish within 60 minutes uh, to one and a half hour. Uh, we'll focus a lot in these few areas, why ATS is needed, understanding the utilization categories, ATS loads and applications, ATS type tests and certifications, making, breaking, short circuit capacity, different types of transfer switches, features and applications, and we will end off with a question and answer. Now, for those who have questions, in essence of time, we will leave the questions at the last part of today's session. And um, feel free to type your questions um, into the chat box. So together me with me and my teammates, um, we will be opening up those questions and answer them one by one at the end of the presentation. Now, the emergency standby power, why are they necessary? So electricity definitely is essential in every part of our project installation. Um, critical systems usually requires emergency power backup by power supply systems. Now, all equipment will not function except for equipment that has been supported by some form of um, backup. For example, we have the UPS that can back up uh, emergency uh, requ requirement systems like emergency lightings, and also uh, motors that, that is supporting the elevators, um, the fire water pumps, exhaust systems, cooling system. Now, um, what happens when we lose power? When we lose power or we lose the co connections from the grid itself, the critical system will be badly impacted, especially uh, in projects like data centers, um, hospitals, military, and also uh, production sectors. All right. Now, emergency power system must be able to back up system, example, like the um, fire pump lightings, the fire pump controls, the exhaust systems, and the um, cooling system. Now, um, emergency standby power as you can see in here, as listed uh, in the code, uh, they do highlight in point form. For so example, for uh, electrical essential, essential in every part of the systems. So we, uh, in this training, we're gonna em emphasize a lot uh, in system that is critical, which uh, requires uh, emergency power to back up the power supply. Um, when we lose power, all equipment will not function as set equipment supported by UPS. Um, lights will go out, except um, emergency lighting powers with battery packs, as we have mentioned, and motor will stop. All right, so this is what we have covered. So um, yet again, um, at the last part, we will talk about um, dangerous situation or possibly life-threatening situations uh, in applications such as a hospital um, or even sometimes production sectors where you have to back up the um, the fire pump controls, the exhaust systems, or cooling system in data centers. Okay, so the, what are the important components or equipments in the emergency standby power? So the, one of the important components are the standby generators. So standby generators are a form uh, of uh, backup equipment that can sustain power in the event of um, a blackout. Uh, apart from this, apart from um, generators, there are other components as well, like the fire-rated cables for firefighting equipments, 
um, they are the they have the emergency switchboard to provide power to the equipment. And lastly, we also have the automatic transfer switch to transfer power from normal switchboard to emergency um, switchboard. Now, when we talk about um, automatic transfer switch, the short form, um, a lot of the people will call it ATS. Now, ATS is there to ensure that we have uh, power to sustain all these emergency switchboards and also critical loads. Over in here in this page, uh, it focuses in terms of the IEC standards for low voltage switch gears and control gears. There are a couple of general um, key standards in here. So, dash one talk about general rules. Dash two talks about um, circuit breakers. Um, dash three talks about switches, disconnectors, fuses, combination units. Four talks about model starters. Five on control circuit device. And six dash one talk about transfer switching equipment, which is today's topic itself. All right, so if you jump into the page for part six dash one on the transfer switching equipment, which is a type test requirement, um, you can see there's a numerous, numerous um, key points in here, like manufacturer name on trademark. Um, also, we have the um, types of uh, serial numbers. If I jump right into pointer number F, which is utilization categories and rated operation current at the rated operated voltage. In here is that um, we're gonna discuss in terms of the categorizations of ATS, which is uh, one of the important factors in terms of selecting. Um, it's a lot based on application on your type of ATS. Example, if your model loads is running on AC, what type of ATS do you use? If your model load is running on DC current, then what type of model load, what kind of ATS do you use? Um, over is this, in this table, um, table one on utilization categories. If you were to see on the right, just focus on the right first, is by the type of applications. Um, over at the top, you can see there's a non-inductive, slightly inductive loads. There's a switching of mixed resistive and inductive loads, motor loads, electrical discharge load lamps, and also um, incandescent lamp loads. It's all broken down into different operations, A and B in here. And you can see there are different categories, AC31, AC32, AC33, 35, and 36. All these belongs to the family of a nature current of AC, alternating current. Now at the bottom row is where we have DC. So DC, yet again, depending on what type of loads, resistive loads, modal loads, or lamp, you will have different categorization in here. But do notice the front starts with DC. All right, so for our starts, it's just to highlight that your selections of your ATS refers to this table one. And then from this table one, we're going to break it down, whether is it AC or DC, and then it goes into different operations based on the categorization. All right, so next is that I'm going to jump into the different categories. What are the AC31? What are AC32? What are AC33? OK. Now, um, let me read through the, the portion at the top. Why is it important to have utilization categories? Utilization categories is to allow the designer to select the use of appropriate transfer switches for the type loads or loads that the transfer switch will be transferring and providing to the supply or power. So over in here, we have three main categories of ATS selection. Now, by knowing the utilization categories in advance, allow US designer to select to use appropriate transfer switches for the types of loads, the types of equipment, by selecting the right ATS uh, to supply power to all this equipment. Okay, so. 31, let's have a look at 31. 31 is for motor loads such as exhaust systems, leaves, 
fire pumps, etc. Now, 32 are for motor loads, UPS, and heaters. 33 are for motor load, UPS, tungstens, and candescent discharge lamp. All right, so you can see all these categorizations are based on the parameters of the load factors. Um, in this page, now we're going to deep dive into the type test requirements of this operational performance, as you can see in here. Now, what is the main purpose of testing the operational performance of a transfer switch? Right. So the purpose is to ensure that the transfer switch is able to transfer at full rate of 100% and 200% for AC33A loads from one supply to another without causing any damage to the transfer switch main contact. So this means that AC31, as which is for uh, those exhaust systems, for your leaves, for your fire pumps, uh, even for AC32, for UPS, heaters are tested only up to 100%. But when it comes to AC33A, is tested up to 100% and 200% on your transfer switch. All right. So this is what is trying to explain uh, in here. So if, for example, your ATS is tested to 1000 M, um, if it's under AC33, it must be tested up to 1000 M and also 2000 M to ensure that it can withstand this form of um, overload. Now, um, AC33A is further broken down into category A and B in here. Now, um, A transfer switch will be transfer switch that's more um, often, more transfer switching um, on load activities. B will be needed for transfer that's less often, less often in here where it requires less switching. All right, so. Over in here is that we're going to dive um, into the table 9 and table 10 in here, where we have the operation A and operation B. Operation A is for transfer switching that needs needed to uh, transfer more frequent, where else operation B are uh, needed, needed um, less frequent. All right. So um, looking at the table at the top, which is um, operation A, indicates the required number of durations of uh, operating cycle test for electrical and mechanical operation performance for operation um, A utilizations. Now, the ATS uh, will be test based on a different level of rated uh, operation current versus the number of operating um, cycles, as you can see uh, in here. What happens when it comes into testings for DC? Now, DC can be found in table three. So table three shows the verifications of operation performance condition for making and breaking of utilization categories. Um, the top row is for AC, the bottom row is for DC. And um, this shows that for the ATS, uh, it does requires both AC and DC testing. So for DC load, uh, utilizations, you can see there's uh, DC 31A 30, uh, to 33 to 36. So you have different categorizations based by the different make and break conditions. So here's a summary chart that I've prepared. So in this summary chart, um, it's an application load matrix. This chart shows where the close uh, open transition applications are being um, divided out in here. And on the right is, uh, on the top is actually divided into the different applications. So example, let's start with motors. So for open transition ATS, is suitable for uh, applications of 50 horsepower and below. And it's not that preferred, not preferred for 50 horsepower above 
and also with uh, with BFD's uh, applications. Now, for open transition with in-phase, ATS will be suitable for all. And the one with the plus is a preferred. Yeah, so it's highly preferred for application that is above 50 horsepower and with non-VFD. Now for closed transition, it will be highly preferred, a preferred model for application above 50 horsepower with VFD, okay? Now over on the right, uh, there will be uh, elevators as well. So there's a uh, open transition the, um, applications, but not preferred for elevators. Elevators are mostly suitable for tra open transition with in-phase or closed transition. Likewise, the same for transformers and UPS. All right, for small application and large, ap large applications, you can see the recommendation in here, example for um, transformers for open transitions, preferred model, and for large transformers, preferred models for closed transition, for UPS, um, preferred model, the method is for both the um, closed transitions for small and large data centers. In this slide, uh, we share in terms of the testing and certifications on the IEC 609-47-6-1, and also the we will also discuss in terms of the EMC and test controllers, the ACSC system standard, and also tested by the third party of Kima. For ESCO ATS, uh, we have total of five certifications. So as you can see in here, uh, 609.47-1, um, EMC testing is uh, a requirement as well. So it's test is make sure that it's qualified uh, to be used for uh, EMC uh, environment. Seismic standards uh, for heavy vibrations, Kima. So this testing is done together with controllers, all right? On table six in here, it lists the type test requirements. So there are forming components that needs um, testing. One is on the general performance characteristic, where they, we evaluate the construction requirements, the operations, the control sequence, the temperature rise, the dielectric properties. Next is on the operating performance, focus on the making and breaking uh, capabilities, focus on the operation of electrical and mechanical capabilities, focus on the design, operation, performance, and constructions. Next, number three is on the verification of short circuit capabilities. So what they verify, they verify on the short circuit, they emphasize on a lot on the temperature rise, after short circuit, and next is the environment test. So this shows the list of types tests in this 609.47-6-1 requirement in here for the ATS. In the next page, um, we're gonna have a, a dive in into the short circuit capabilities of the transfer switches as in the rated short circuit making capacity for class P, C, and CC, and also on the rated short time withstand current where applicable, the rated conditional short circuit current associated with SCPD where it's applicable, and the rated short circuit making and breaking capacity for class CB in here. Now, what is the main purpose to test all this um, short circuit making capacity and rated short time withstand current for transfer switch? Reason being is because rated short circuit making capacity test is to ensure that the transfer switch is able to close on a fault current without causing any serious damage to 
the transfer switch main contact. Now the transfer switch must be able to withstand certain period of short circuit stream protection device trip without causing any damage to the transfer switch main contact. After both tests, the transfer switch will go through temperature rise tests and rated oper uh, operational current. The transfer switch must not attain a temperature rise exceeding a given point, which might constitute to fire or damage to any materials that are uh, that is used within the transfer switch itself. Okay. Right. So over in here, what is the main purpose to test the rated short circuit making capacity and rated short time withstand current trans uh, transfer switch? The key points in here. Number one, the rated short circuit making capacity test is to ensure that the transfer switch is able to close at the fault current without causing any serial damage to the transfer switch main contact. Number two, the transfer switch must be able to withstand certain period of short circuit current until the upstream protection device trip without causing any damage to the transfer switch main contact. Third, after both tests, the transfer switch will go through temperature rise tests at rated operational current. The transfer switch must not attain temperature at any point to constitute fire hazard or to damage any materials employed in the transfer switch. In this page, we talk about the making and breaking capacity. What is the main purpose for making and breaking capacity test for transfer switch. Number two, what is the purpose of making and breaking capacity? Is to ensure that the transfer switch be able to transfer in overload condition or situation without causing any damage to the transfer switch main contact. All right. So the key keyword I've highlighted in here is to transfer in overload condition. So this test is to ensure that it can make a break in high current to the transfer switch. All right. And uh, when problem arise, in additional transfer shouldn't cause any damage to the transfer switch, very importantly on the main contacts. Now, number three, up to 10 times the rated current of the transfer, depending on the utilization category. Um, Remember in the previous page, we talked about AC33 under IEC standards. This is a requirement that it must be tested 10 times the rated current for AC uh, requirements. And then um, what it does for other systems, there will be the 100% and it's the 200% requirements and it will be tested based on this number of times in here, depending on the categorizations. Third. The number of testing cycles depend on the operation utilizations of categories A or B. So what this means in here is that each category is tested differently. So depending whether you are using on category A or category B, um, every test is subdivided between um, more switching or less switching. If it's more switching, it will be A, lesser switching will be B. We jump into the topic of withstand and close in on fault scenario. Um, on the left, you get to see the circuit breaker for transfer switching. And in the middle, you get to see a dotted line in there. That, that's the dotted line. And this actually uh, refers to as the interlocking system. And on the right is the system using the ATS, which is the PC type. Um, in normal condition, when there's a fault at the downstream, it will be relatively simple. The example if there's a fault taking place um, at the uh, downstream of the circuit breaker, the circuit breaker will take into effect. But what happens is that when the fault is on the upstream causing a breakage in here, is that if the fault is uncleared itself, the automatically 
the, the interlock system will swing over to the source of the generator and while the fault is still there. Now, this could be a relatively dangerous situation because when the fault is not clear, we do not want the generator to be supplying as this could cause arcings and could cause other dangerous um, situation. Now, in a scenario of an ATS, it's been in place. Let's have a look. When there's a fault, it will cause the breakers of this connecting to the utility to open, which is correct because there's a fault being detected. And then what it does is that it will swing over to the generator. In the generator, if there's also a fault that is being detected as well, we want the breaker to open. So this in a way will be a much safer system because the fault is not resolved. We want the breakers that is coming from both utility and the gen set to open for safety reasons. All right, so in the short circuit requirement, there's a few key points in here. It must withstand short circuit currents for three to 25 cycles until the upstream over current protection strips. And it must be capable of withstanding the dielectric tests. It must continue to carry rated operation, operator, operational current after short circuit tests. Um, the ATS main contacts cannot be replaced after short circuit tests. It must pass temperature rise after close on withstand tests. Now, the importance of equipment must be tested to comply to standards, to safety user and systems, to ensure reliability of the product, and also the product performance according to its intended application. Circuit breaker, circuit breaker manufacturers have tested the, uh, um, the circuit breakers to certain standards that is uh, being required. So what are the, the standards, which is 609.47-2 and dash one, right? Um, when it's come to common design to fulfill for transfer switches, it's also a must for compliance. So over in here, dash two and dash one. But the dash one does not limit to the use of only circuit breaker, which means that you can actually use a ATS in this portion itself. But in many applications, most circuit breakers are only tested to dash two from what I understand. So not many brands I've seen in the market, they have both testing for dash two and dash one. And that is why um, in applications like this, where it requires two types of testings, customers will tend to choose ATS because ATS itself is tested to which dash one on the bottom, where at the top you can use dash two for your circuit breaker. All right. Over in here is a report that shows that ESCO has tested for both fault current rating and time settings against the upstream protection relay. Um, here is where we have a, a testing that's been done for fault current combinations with uh, various uh, brands of uh, different circuit breakers. And also it complies with the UL1008 in terms of the withstand and closing ratings itself. Okay, next is we're gonna have a we're gonna dive into this um multifunctional equipment for the transfer switching. So before we go into the different switching type, uh we'll go through this statement in here. So 3-1 focus in some of the switching device. 3-11 talks about the transpose switching equipment. Equipment containing one or more switching device for disconnecting load circuits from one supply and connecting to another supply. So what this means, this means that um, the general requirements of switching equipment is to provide powers to loads from one supply source and switching to another supply source when the original power source 
fail. Now, three to one explains operating sequence of ATSC. So the transfer switch equipment. In here, it explains that the automatic transfer of load from normal supply to an alternative supply in the event of monitored supply deviation with an automatic return of the load to the normal supply when restored. In summary, is that the automatic transfer capabilities powering the load via normal supply, source one or source two alternative supply. The event of the supply is then monitored. Now, once the normal supply has recovered, it must have the capability again to automatically return back to the normal supply of the power load. So this is what this statement is trying to explain in here. Next is that we're going to dive into the different type of um, transfer switches very quickly. We have the open transition on the left, which is make before break. We have closed transition, which is, uh, sorry, the first one is break before make. The second one is make before break. The third one is closed transition with come with isolation bypass, which is make before break. Right, so for the one with bypass, I would say this is more for service and maintenance where you can do bypass and power supply uh, during uh, the maintenance phase. Now, this slide focuses in terms of the open transition transfer required the break, the break before make. Now, um, in the event of a power failure, the ATS automatically would detect the failure, and that is where the generator will start working. Now, the ATS will wait for the voltage and frequency to be in the right moment, then synchronize will transfer. But this will only take place when it's connecting back to the utility. Now, what I mean is here. Now, in the first break itself, there will be a loss in power. There will, there will not be any synchronization because there's nothing to synchronize. The utility source power have failed the emergence and the um, generator is uh, in the midst of uh, starting up. So the loss well, we could be talking about 20, 20 to 60 milliseconds. And um, this is why there is a breakage in the beginning. We call it a break before make. All right, so this break will um, let the operation experience some form of power interruption. Now, when the SPPG utility regain power, the ATS will switch back to its normal supply, which means that you will change the changeover will take place. Now, in here, if it's a break before make situation, there will be another round of interruption because it will first break the connection from the generator set, and then it will make the connections with the utility. So this solution is for less crit critical applications where power interruptions is not an issue. Um, and end users that is adopting this kind of design should be aware that there'll be interruption in event of a power failure. So for open transfer, transition transfer, break before make, if you choose this kind of design for your projects, do note the transfer switch is one arm. It's either on the normal supply or the emergency supply. In this setup, there is no electrical or mechanical interlock. The load is disconnected during power failures condition and retransfer upon restorations of normal source. Interruptions to load is inevitable during every transfer. Feature to transfer in phase and overlapping features is available. Now, problem arise from open transition, live to live transfer, is there will be nuisance tripping of ground protection relays on your ELCB or RCB. And also there'll be voltage spikes as well. So you can see in this scenario where your L1 is actually higher than your L2 and L3 in here. 
So this cause uh, unbalancing of loads that um, can ultimately where cause the load imbalancing and cause unnecessary tripping. In the world of ATS, you will get to hear this technology called switch neutral technology. So in this illustration, example, you're connected to a generator. And from that applications, once you trip, you wish to connect back to the source, you can see there's two toggling arm, one toggling arm to the second toggling arm. Now, one arm is actually tilted towards the utility source, and the other arm is tilted towards the emergency source, and that is actually to the neutral. Now, the problem with switch neutral is that the arm for phase A and B, and um, also the one that is on the end, they move together at the same time. So example, when power fails, all right? So all poles will break, and then they will attempt to disconnect, and while trying to attempt connection to the emergency source itself. Now, this breakage will cause arcing. Now, arcing uh, during this process is something that we try to avoid. One way, is to make sure that the neutral land first on the e source in order to prevent that. But if it haven't prevent itself, you haven't um, make the connections, what you will experience is that you will experience floating. All right? So floating neutral uh, is something that we try to, to avoid because uh, this will cause uh, load unbalancing and you also result to the nuisance tripping. So you can see in these animations where we have a switching of two toggling arms, where there's arcing, and here is the voltage difference between E1 and E2 that you can see uh, from the, the formulas. All right. And with the generators, it's up. And once it's switched back, yet again, you see there's a voltage difference that's uh, causing an imbalance system in here. Now, what happens if we were to make the neutral overlap to prevent unbalancing load? If we were to overlap the neutral, you will get to see this term called overlap being neutral. Now, ATS adopt this te te technology, all right, which is called the overlapping neutral technique. Um, pretty much you can see there's still a two arm uh, method. The utility power, uh, once it regains the power, the ATS will wish to switch back to its main source where all poles will break. Now, before the transfer from the E source back to the utility source, what it does here differently compared to the previous slide, first, it ensures that the neutral reference is still connected to the utility source. Second, it ensures the neutral arm at the E source is still in contact as well. So even there is still arcing on A and B, at least the neutral is already connected at both utility and E source. So this is called overlapping, all right? So you can see the angles between the face and the neutral, the toggle arm is slightly different. In overlapping neutral, is only when toggle A and B have fully transferred over, then the neutral arm will then release its contact from the emergency source. This way, this technique will minimize unbalanced node 
and also ultimately allow you to minimize your nuisance tripping. So we see from the animation in here, utility load. You see, you can see there is an overlapping neutral in here, and then toggle arm A and B switch over for both. And the same once it switches back. And then once toggle A and B is safely back to the main source, then the overlapping neutral toggle arm will release from the ESOS. As with us uh, control, as what well, the ETS should do, um, the three poles transfer provide a basic load switching operation of three phase backup power applications. The transfer is done between normal and emergency source. In the solid neutral setup, the neutral conductor of the emergency source is bonded. You can see here is bonded to the neutral conductor. So this is done by uh, very simple using a neutral plate uh, with flux. Now the problem with solid neutral ATS is that it's unable to route fault currents with multiple grounds. In addition, it's unable to ensure uh, proper uh, ground fault sensing. So this is because a lack of means of disconnecting uh, the neutral from the normal site that leave the entire power system serving two grounds at a single one time. Usually ATS is installed close to, uh, to the load. So means uh, it'll be slightly further or it'll be more further away to the generators. Now this results to longer cables uh, from the generators. And this could be cases where the phase line cable have a possibility to get to get damage. And the ATS, uh, this will also result to problems where once the uh, the cables are damaged and your backup power will be affected as well. Um, apart from this is that during this process, the system, once it's been cut off, uh, your, your grounding has been removed, uh, is your is called ungrounded. Um, this might also energize the GenSec uh, frame and casing. So if the ground fault, if our ground fault occurs, this can result to certain form of electrical hazards when the GenSec frame um, has fault current. Another danger is that it might also trigger the ground fault protection device, which trips the circuit uh, at the normal source, which it doesn't want. This is then also leads to other issues, or especially when it's transferring back to the normal source. So uh, when you cannot transfer back to the normal source because your circuit breaker is already uh, in open state. All right, so you can see that there's a simulation in here. There's a card in the cable. Now, one way to overcome is to have a switch neutral ATS at the neutral portion in here. Now with, uh, with this technology, it's actually quite simple. It actually creates a separate ground to the emergency source. So example, if the line is cut, again at the normal source, the transfer to the E source will take place. Now with the neutral switch, it can now disconnect the neutral from the normal source, enabling the entire power to serve only one ground, one grounding point. Simply by adding this uh, neutral switch will enable the ATS to switch between normal or emergency source uh, using an extra pole that you can see at the bottom in here. And this way is much more preferred because the process is always grounded. Uh, it prevents uh, what we have discussed earlier where your, gens your genset frame casing have fault currents and other electrical hazards that we have discussed um, earlier.
Now, over in here is that we're going to do a comparison between switch neutral and overlapping neutral. Focus, uh, this will be focusing on some of the importance of the neutral connections. For switch neutral, during the switching process, A, B, and um, line A, line B, and neutral, the neutral arm is neither touching end of the utility transformer, neither it is touching the generator. For overlapping neutral, later you will see in this technology, during the switching process, the neutral arm is touching the end of the utility of the transformer and is touching the end contact of the generator. So when arcing AB were to take place, it will be diminished much more faster compared to a switch neutral technology. Um, the overlap neutral in terms of the operation time, I would say is between 100 milliseconds. Your earth fault relay settings for your generators and normal source must be set higher or above the, this rating of 100 milliseconds or what we call it the 0 0.1 seconds. Else um, you will experience tripping. So this is one key areas to take note of. So example of your earth fault relay, you can set it to uh, 500 milliseconds or we call it 0.5 seconds, which will eliminate this, uh, which will help you to solve all this unnecessary tripping. Okay, so next we're going to go into the animations. The utility of uh, fails, switching switch over, but do notice for overlapping neutral, the contact point for utility and e source is always in connections. All right. And when the utility power is back, when it switches back, it's the same effect. So this will pre prevent the um, arcing, prevent floating of neutral, prevent unbalanced node. So that is why overlapping neutral is much more preferred in this scenario. So overlapping neutrals, where it can be used for? It can be used for critical applications like data centers. It's a common design in data centers where it requires isolation transformers when transferring power between source one and source two. This is because um, all four poles will break when transferring from one source to an alternate source. Now in the past, it's easy where data center designs where we just put in the isolating transformer for transferring power between source one and two. But um, more and more of the data centers now get lesser space or they have a very high space constraint. There isn't any luxury anymore for having a bulky isolation transformer in the room. So the next best alternative for you to consider in the design is to use overlapping neutral. ATS. Therefore, for data centers who consider overlapping neutral in your design, this is where your traditional four pole changeover, all four poles will break and to do ref in to do reference from the neutral. Um, in here, we can see that um, ATS with overlapping neutrals will not break neutral reference point during the power. This point. This also explains is that it can be achieved uh, that your neutral doesn't break during the switching, giving you that excellent continuous neutral reference point. The third point in here is that it will prevent floating neutral, which causes uh, voltage spikes on your life and neutral, life and life. This can eliminate the need for uh, and this can limit the need for isolation transformers. Overlap neutrals must be lesser than 100 milliseconds to ensure there's no circulation of current in neutral. Right, so there's a um, distinction in terms of the time settings in here. Okay, so on the left, we can see for data centers design, they use the ATS design where you have the isolating transformer over in here, isolating transformer, 
just before the UPS can take up significant amount of space by using uh, overlapping neutral ATS. It eliminates the needs for uh, isolating transformer. All right. Um, three poles incoming and four pole incoming. Um, there's a difference for three poles uh, circuit breakers. If there's a fault, it will need to clear life one, life two, life three. So your neutral is not broken. So do take note that um, there's a difference, which is a very common applications questions when it comes in terms of the poles about three and four poles in here. All right, so in this design, the recommendation is a three pole where your neutral remains intact. Okay, next is that we're gonna focus in terms of what the problem cause when it comes to applications like motor loads. The breaker trips due to induced high current, Model insulation damage due to voltage transient, model shaft and coupling damage due to mechanical stress. Transferring large model load in open transition, uh, you will see in this animation in here, which is a very common problem when performing model load transition, resulting in high in rush current. This challenge comes when switching between source one and source two between the normal source and the E source. After breaking off from the utility source, um, it stays at the central off position before engaging into another source. Now, during the central position, um, by doing so, it will prevent, what you can do, it can prevent EMF. This is because the phase between source one and source two may not have then be in sync. Uh, this is, in a way to prevent high in rush current. Now, um, when there's high in rush current, what you can, uh, there we, it might cause serious damage uh, back to your equipment load, to your motor load. Uh, and high in rush current sometimes can be recorded as high as about 10 to 18 times of the starting current of the motors, uh, which is something that uh, we try to avoid. So you can see in this animation in here, high in rush currents up to 18 times of back EMM that cause the circuit breakers to trip or sometimes even damage the model. Now, the key message in here, if you have a synchronization in place, this will solve the problem in here. So this will enable your model to run continuously. The solutions is to have a synchronizer to ensure that there will be, the waveform will not be out of phase. In data centers commonly used is because there are models, especially they are found in the crack units. Now the benefits of having ATS, well, with uh, in-phase transfer, what it does in this little device is, is constantly checking for the phase angle difference. By checking the phase angle difference between a generator and a normal supply, you ensure as little as possible a degree of 10 degree difference. This is to ensure a minimum phase angle differences. So this technology is available in the ATS, uh, where you will wait for both sides to be in phase, then the switching uh, will take place. So that is why we will get to hear this technology called transfer in phase is because there is a synchronizer in place. Um, what are the benefits? The benefit of doing this is that it will prevent um, high inrush currents. So by reducing this uh, inrush currents, you can eliminate back EMF and you can generally protect your models. All right. Now, um, there's another very common question. What if both the source phase and the emergency phase, the, uh, the phase is so stable now um, that you couldn't get a synchronization? If the difference between two sources cannot match up, they are consistent um, in all across timing. One of the way to overcome this is to adjust the setting of your generator's frequency to tune it slightly off, example to 50.1 hertz, so that the frequency have a chance to overlap. 
Um, why we tune only slightly by 0.1 to 50.1 and not more? Because if it's set too high, the phase shift will be too fast. So we do not want that to happen as well. So some slight uh, configuration will be sufficient. So here's the animation. So of transfer in phase. So it prevent back EMF when it's at the central states. And then it will uh, switch over back to the utility. So you can see in rush current, it has been um, not entirely uh, eliminated, but it has been uh, highly reduced, right? So over in here, we're going to do a dive into what is closed transition or what we call the make before break transfer switch. Um, a short form for closed transition transfer, we call it the CTTS, refers to the switch. So closed trans, uh, transition transfer switch, um, in short, is that you make before you break. And you will get to see in the animation, but before we go into animation, I'll explain. Now, this technology generally reduces the interruptions. And um, do note that even when you use ATS, there will still be some form of interruption unless you use a UPS um, on your load. Once the interruption is detected, the generator will start. The ATS will first detect the voltage and frequency to do in phase. And in this scenario, if it's not synchronized, it will not transfer. It will only transfer when both sides are synchronized. And then it will make first before it breaks from the, uh, the, the main contacts itself. Now, the difference between um, break before make versus make before break is that um, the breakage from the supply, it will break from the supply and then it will make with the emergency source. This is actually to prevent any backflow. So this is done so that they will not be reverse in power back into the main system. To also reverse, uh, to avoid the reverse power flow back into the main supply, what it does is that it will break from your main supply and then closes its toggle to the emergency genset. Now, once both end is in sync, then the switching will be uh, will be executed. The make connections to the normal source will take place, and then the break will happen from the emergency source. Now, once the supply is back, what happens when the supply is back? This means that when switching between two live source, it will do make before break, before uh, in these technologies, and the very important uh, aspect is that there will be this synchronizing check. You will check on the voltage, you will check on the frequency, you will check on the phase angle, ensuring that will be uh, a difference of less than 5%. Or if it's in terms of frequency, uh, it will be lesser, lesser in a difference of uh, 0.2 hertz. Right? So I will go into animations to photo illustration illustrate this demonstration in here. So the emergency generators have kicked in. But I switch over to the load. One utility is back. You will check on the synchronization and then you will make before you break. So this um, Criteria for closed transition transfer is actually the regulated in IEEE standard 241. And in these 241 standards, there are certain requirements where your overlapping time must be less than 100 milliseconds. And they even set the synchronizing parameters. Our voltage must be less than 5%, frequency less than 0.2 hertz, phase angle less than uh, 5 degree. And there's no need for protection relays uh, for the protection controllers. Now, why they don't require protection relays is because the protection relays is not uh, referring to the relays tip unit of the incoming ACB. 
from the, gener the transformer or generator. They are designed to clear a faults and overcurrent. Now, the protection relays is actually referring to the one in the ATS controllers. Now, in synchronizing and uh, paralleling the system between two sources of lesser than 100 milliseconds, usually additional protection relays uh, are factored in due to the reverse powers, the under and over voltage, frequency negative sequence are there, uh, which is required to protect the ATS controller. But with the momentary overlapping option, the overlapping of two sources of lesser than 100, 100 milliseconds, the close transition or make before break transfer, make these over uh, current relays protections are also not needed the, for the ATS controller because there will be no more reverse power taking place in here. So you can see with a tighter window for protections of the load. The close transition transfer make before break. In summary, here are the key requirements. The closed transition uh, have two arms, switching arms. The load is disconnected only once during the power failure due to absence of health sources. Overlap will not exceed 100 milliseconds. No interruptions of load during retransfer. No interruption during the schedule maintenance. No protection, um, no protection relay that is required. So just to answer a common questions on why to use closed transition transfer, the answer is the closed transition transfer minimize power interruptions to critical loads. And the key decision factors that affect all this is the in every power failures, the only one power interruptions to the load, unlike open transition transfer, every power failures, the load will be interrupted two times. Um, the ability to test the emergency system without interrupting the load, and during the schedule utility outage, no power interruption to the load. Uh, another factor is there's no nuisance tripping to the ground fault relay of ERCB, elimination of voltage spikes, and also peak shavings of power interruption to the load itself. Okay, so next is that we're going to talk about in terms of the maintenance aspect. So some projects like um, data centers or airports, every few weeks they require the ATS uh, to be tested. The issue with testing is that um, it will affect the actual load. So therefore, you want to have minimum interruption during the testing of the switch. Uh, so to do the ATS test, first what they do is that they do a make before break. They start the generators, they ensure the power is between the two source, and then they make sure the make before break is less so occurs between 40 to 70 milliseconds. Can you imagine using three circuit breakers to an ATS make before break? There'll be a lot of interruptions and imagine the clients want to have a test every few weeks. So that is why having an ATS will be much more preferred even when you come into the maintenance aspect itself. So over in here, we talk about the operational safety of the closed transition transfer switch of our CCTS. So over in here, the momentary overlap of two source without any control of the two, two uh, main contacts without any protection relays. The momentary overlapping of two source must be less than 100 milliseconds because of the two source will be out of phase depending on the frequency difference. So the example will be is that if you don't have a closed transition uh, synchronizing check itself, that this is something that you can eliminate, the uh, uh, problem that you can eliminate. Next is that uh, you have in the event of a controller of component failure during momentary overlap, the CTTS is able to prevent two different sources from become permanent overlap that will cause damage to the emergency backup power, and also how to ensure no load interruptions in the event of CTTS failures during momentary overlap, right? So these are certain key areas that uh, we have to look into. 
and also we look into the safety features. The last operator to close will automatically open up. When operator fails to open up after a period of time of less than 80 milliseconds, the system will be locked out itself. All right, so here shows an illustration of a CCTS, the last contact set to close, which will automatically open. First, the normal power supply fails and the genset kicks in. Once the normal power resumes, the ATS will do a sync check. It will do overlap of less than um, in 100 milliseconds. The first toggle uh, close or make with the main supply while contact with the genset will still be in place in less than 100 milliseconds after the contact with the main, sub, uh, main supply has been made. Then the genset toggle will open up and break. Okay. All right, so over in here, you see the difference um, between the make before break and the closed transition using the circuit breaker and ATS. Um, on the left, you can see the ATS is uh, made from circuit breakers. Controller by the ATS controllers when function fails, the circuit breaker is no longer able to function itself. On the center, you get to see the ATS um, instead of a circuit breaker, but only one controller. Um, if one controller fails itself, the ATS is no longer able to function. On the right, you see the ATS instead of a circuit breaker. Uh, there's two controllers, the ATS main control, and there's also a dual controllers. The first controlled by the normal supply position. The second is being controlled by the emergency supply position itself. So it talks about the different controllers in here. Now we're going to go into this slide for the coordinations uh, of the breakers, which is actually a very uh, important topic in here. Now, um, why so is because when that is a fault that occurs, um, what it does is that it should clear by the, the protective protection device that is closest to the fault. Now, if we have a look at figure 2a, now the fault occurs um, at this point A, so circuit breaker F3 will clear the fault. Now, notice that ATS will experience the fault currents in this entire process itself. Now, a good coordination should be in place as well because if Breco uh, were to trip together with the rest of the other breakers, like Breco M were to trip together, you will lose generally your power that is now going down from F1 and F2 as well. So the coordination between M and F3 have to be uh, properly coordinated so that the upstream doesn't trip as well. Now, likewise for figure three in here, now we simulate that as a fault here at B. The, um, naturally, L1 will be the line that will be tripping itself, all right? Same thing, the ATS will experience the fault and we do not want F3 to trip. So uh, if there is no coordination in place, F3 will trip, it will cause both L2 and L3 downstream to be affected because power will be lost, even though your ATS is connected to the main source itself, right? So um, this is one slide that talks about uh, be it the application of ATS, that your circuit breakers coordinations between the different layers have to be done properly so that when there's a fault occurring at any level, it doesn't cause the upstream breakers to trip unnecessarily. Okay, so uh, over in here is the closed transition transfer or make before break summary. So for designers who are planning to implement a closed transition transfer or make before break design, here are three key summaries that to take, take away. First is the momentary overlapping of two different source must be lesser than 100 milliseconds. The system that parallels the two different sources for more than 100 milliseconds is not momentarily overlapping, but paralleling the system. Now, second key point in here is paralleling two source must have 
the, um, uh, control of uh, frequency and voltage on one of the source the, um, and to provide protection relays, reverse powers, under over voltage, frequency in negative sequence, over current, etc. for both source and increase the short circuit withstand of the switchboard. Now, the, um, do take note that IEC do not call for um, necessary call for make before break, but this means that close transition is actually a bonus for your design itself. Okay, now um, using transfer switch is to be tested with IEC 60947-1. Standard is to ensure that the equipment is safe and reliable. So testing of the generators as well. Users will um, usually get load banks to test generators. These are necessary. Uh, for instance, in hospital, uh, sometimes uh, a lot of case where in projects, I see that the space is constrained, constrained where they have no space for load band. So the generator first starts, um, then a synchronizing check is done, then test will be done using the actual load. So this is usually what I see is happening. And um, well, when this test is done, they will transfer back without interrupting the supply. The genset um, normally is tested um, on a monthly basis, all right? So uh, to prevent um, any uh, interruptions if event of a failure, power failure. In this slide, you get to see the closed transition transfer, make before break that comes with a uh, isolation bypass. All right. So the breaker can be isolated in here. So uh, you can see. And but the ATS is will have some difficulty to do maintenance because it is either connected to the normal source or the emergency source. So this could be a challenge. Now, if bypass system might be necessary. This is to maintain the ATS then without a need of shutting down. Now the load will be down. Uh, the, the critical load cannot afford any downtime or shutdown, and that is why a bypass systems uh, will be your options that you might have to put into um, your design. So the bypass systems will look like this. You have a bypass handle. On the right, you can see there are some status in there in terms of your bypass switch, the, um, in terms of the status using LEDs. Um, and then you have on the bottom, this is what we call the ATS isolation handle um, to actually rack out the ATS. Okay. Um, apart from this, uh, there will be this uh, LED lights, all right, that is um, to ensure it's not an automatic load. An automatic mode to light up the when bypass is in use. All right, so there are certain indicators in there, and also in here is that you will see um, a different part of the switch. On the left is the control panel, and on the right is the transfer um, transfer switch. Right, so connecting to the uh, either the alternate source or the normal source, and I'm um, in the middle where uh, there's the load itself. Well, uh, it's um constantly providing information data in terms of the voltage sensing frequencies for transfer control and also for voltage sensing to the control panel. Now, the benefit of an isolation bypass, uh, I would say, is highly um, recommended in critical applications like data centers, telecoms, hospitals, hotels, pharmaceutical productions, where you can actually have these features to do bypass even while your load is on. And key features um, is that you can have a backup transfer switch in the event where the ATS is 40. And also in terms of service ability and sustainability, the ATS can be serviced without interruption to the load. And the ACS can be tested when the load is connected via the bypass. Right? And this gives you flexibility as well. Um, it can also prevent sabotage. The ATS cannot be withdrawn if the bypass is not connected. This is also a form of safety features that the ATS cannot be connected if the arms are closed on a different side of the bypass. 
So maintenance for your switch, why is it necessary? It's a routine actually recommended in the um, IEC 94761. Uh, it's a good practice. Um, ETS can be tested during maintenance without interruption of load and maintenance should be carried out by approved service engineer. Okay, so by understanding the different setup here, we're going to go into the transfer switch requirement, which is the class. So um, in the class, there's three types. There's PC, CB, and CC. So there's actually uh, indicated in the IEC 609-47-6-1. Um, it's important for the designers to actually decide on what is the class of the transfer switch that they're going to use. Um, if I were to jump in deeper into the classes itself, class PC is TSE that is capable of making and withstanding, but not intended for breaking short circuit current. Right. So this means that the class PC is a transfer switch that's made from scratch from ETS manufacturers, designed and capable of making and withstanding, but not intended for breaking short circuit current itself. Right. So. The second line in here, TSC provided with overcurrent releases and the main contacts of which are capable of making and are intended for breaking short circuit current. So over in here is that for class CB is actually designed and with a provision of overcurrent releases and the main contacts of which are capable of making are intended for breaking short circuit current itself. Now, for CC in here, TSC is capable of making and withstanding, but not intended for breaking short circuit current. TSC based on device fulfilling the requirement of IEC 609-47-1. Right? So in here, all these three methods are controlling the transfer uh, of the switch itself. So the, the three methods of controlling could be manually, uh, where you have required the MTSE, right? The three methods, MTSE, or we have the RTSE, which is for remote the operated switch equipment. And we have the ATSE, which is a common one, which is called the automatic transfer switching of equipment. Um, what class the ETS comply to will also be indicated in the test report uh, of the equipment uh, because the ATS will be tested to this uh, IEC 609-4-1. So here's the illustration how the CC ATS actually uh, works. So there's uh, two supply source in here, one from a utility and one from the genset, uh, two units of circuit breakers, and two units of contactor. So the connector, the contactors are actually are connected uh, with a dotted line in here. Uh, this is actually the mechanical interlock that is actually connecting to two sources. One source is to the transformer, the other source is to the generator. Now the distinct features are the two contactors are interlocked to perform a changeover system. Now as the contactor is for changeover system, their design is for making not for breaking right because breaking will be the job of the circuit breaker All right so you can see the circuit breaker will be needed as well to perform the breaking function while the contactor is there to do the making functions to the load now the second here is class cb so class cb you notice that the contactor is missing in here all right, there's no contactor and the dotted line is still in there, the mechanical interlock. Um, circuit breakers is used, uh, especially the, usually the rating is relatively high. Um, the interlock system is connecting this uh, changeover between CB1 and CB2. So this means that um, the circuit breaker is now performing the role of a changeover system, perform, performing the role as a switching device compared to the earlier slide itself. So in this setup, the, together with the mechanical interlock, is called break before make for class CB. 
all right now and the interlocking features is to ensure that at any one time only one circuit breaker is closed right so they'll take note that the interlock is mechanical or and it also can be a electrical interlock now in the iec standards it doesn't indicate specifically whether in your design that you should use a mechanical or electrical but so long there is an interlock system that deems complies to the standards uh, that will actually fulfill to the requirements now um, i have some designers that are actually asking me how does this interlock looks like i would say it looks more like a bicycle chain that is connecting to uh, circuit breakers, right? Um, the advantage of uh, mechanical interlock systems uh, over electrical is that the failure rate is relatively rare, where electrical interlock uh, can be bypassed easily, uh, and this might cause some concerns as well to some users. The operating speed uh, between electrical and mechanical is more or less and I would say that the speed is mostly subjected to which brand and model that you choose. Now, um, tier over is class PC for ATS. Now, class PC is that as a transfer switch, but um, there's using two circuit breakers as a protective device, transferring between the end source, normal source, to E, which is the emergency source, with circuit breaker device to use to protect the, um, the system. So in class PC, in summary, is that you have an ATS, you have a circuit breaker to actually act as a protective device. In the event there's a fault in here, the circuit breaker will trip, right? So here is also just to give a summary, there are many other devices for um, transfer switching equipment, um, other devices, ATS. So we have contactors for model status indicated in 609-47-4, also UL-508. We have switch disconnectors in dash three, indicated also in UL-363. We have circuit breakers, in dash two for UL489, and we have the true double troll indicated in dash one in UL1008. Now, um, one of the things to take note that some devices may be uh, functioning as ATS, but very importantly is to check whether is it been tested according to a recognized IEC or UL uh, regulation. Now in here, you will observe that there's a main tie system that's setting up between two circuit breakers the, of 4000M, CP1, and CP2. So this is what we call the interlock system. Now the options for interlocking is either via electrical or mechanical, right? And then over in here is connect to a normally open bus tie. And then from here, it goes into a typical uh, load that's on the downwards itself. Right, so this is a main tie system, a very typical CB class CB setup. So in the event with this setup, we will look into the sequence. So once um, TR1 fails or blackout in here, there's a blackout in here. The, you can see that the line is completely black. So load one loses supplies from TR1. As we goes into the second phase, CP1 now uh, opens up in here, okay? And this ensure that the, um, the supply from TR1 is completely cut. There's no possibility of backflow. Then over in here, CP3 closes. You can see CP3 closes and load one is then now powered up by TR transformer number two because CB2 is closed. So what happens when the power has been restored? In the restorations, so you can see in this game in here is that uh, first of all, it shows here rate where your T TR1, where your power resume. But do notice that your CB1 is still open, which means that load one and two is still drawing power from TR2. Now, if you go into the second diagram in here, that um, CB3 now opens up. CB3 opens up, all right? 
So this is to prevent any backflow from uh, that is ensure it's totally cut from load one for parallel load. So once this is cut itself, what it does is here is that CV1 closes. So now load one is drawing power completely from TR1. So all these are done uh, manually uh, using an interlock system. So what are the advantage of using a class PCATS compared to a class CBATS for main tie system? Now, the double throw design for PCATS will not parallel the two source under any circumstances. It is very easy, no sequence or operation of class PCATS, and it's not possible to make mistake of accidental paralleling two source during manual operations. Um, thirdly, you do not need a well-trained engineer to operate a system, and it can be performed um, under automatic or manual operations. Um, it's tested under IEC 60947-6-1 is proven to be able to operate um, normally after the transfer switch is subjected to short circuit withstand and closing on fault. Um, better reliability and performance with little additional cost, warranty with um, single manufacturers, and there's no confusion of which party to contact for after sales support. Right, so there are also certain disadvantages in here. So the disadvantages of using a class CB for main tie system, um, the operator, the operator operating a system must be well trained and familiar with the required operations. The operator must follow the sequence of operation. Failure to do so will result in accidents paralleling two source. Um, not possible to have a key interlock system for automatic operations system fabricated by third party that uses the product for different manufacturers. Equipment not tested to IEC 60947-6-1 standards for ETS standards. Um, and after expire of warranty, um, there'll be a question in terms of who to call for support. Right, so the this like is just a summary in terms of the PCATS and CBATS. Uh, the design priority of a uh, uh, PCATS that is on the grounding where the transfer load uh, uh, that's actually focusing a lot in terms of the neutral and nerve must be seamless. Um, on the right, where your CBATS design you use as an overcurrent protection to protect cables and installation of equipment, where the design priority focuses a lot on protecting the downstream devices for overcurrent. And also the, for the main contact rating in here is 100% continuous without derating, whereas for CBATS it's not 100%, the load is up to 85% itself. Okay, um, there is safety interlock system to prevent the accidental parallel of two supplies. Right, so an inherent mechanical interlock for PCATS, which will never fail. CBATS is using cable or bicycle change. Sometimes can fail task to preventing circuit breaker from operating. The short circuit currents for PCATS, the PCATS uh, is able to withstand and close on short circuit current without the need to service or replace the main contact, where LCBATS is to break and make short circuit current, the main contact has to be serviced or replaced. Contact lifespans uh, is because the ATS uh, are designed for repetitions, operation at 100% rating, this will be PC. For CBATS, medium lifespan, contacts are not designed for repetitions and operations. Overlapping neutral, all right, so this feature is to ensure there's no floating or neutral during life-to-life -life transfer. So it's available in PCATS, not available in CBATS. Next is the on term of the maintenance uh, for PCATS cost and um, is easy, which is efficient for all main and arcing contacts at uh, the front, separate mains and arcing contacts. For CBATS, will be difficult because the main and arcing contacts is not at the front. The main and arcing contacts are usually joined together. Manual operations can be manually operated for PCATS, even the coils and the control panel is damaged. Um, for CBATS, cannot be manually operated. 
Okay, so uh, with this, uh, this is summary chart uh, to distinct between the PC ATS and CB ATS. And now we very quickly go to into the Q&A session where you are encouraged to um, unmute your mic and share your questions. And also we will be going through the question uh, that you have indicated in the chat box.